The patient zero for many of these games will be the work of the returner's group, the earliest example of a Final Fantasy role-playing game. Final Fantasy D6 is no exception. Starting out as an undertaking by Scott Teniglin, it began with a small group of designers, changing hands over the years, with his current version developed by Samuel Banner. Originally starting out as a hack of the returner's work, time made it take its own path. In the words of its creator, it wants to aim for the feel and style of the Final Fantasy series, using a rule system for casual play as opposed to the more hardcore approach that the returners did with their work. How does it hold up? Let's find out. Character creation is job-centric, a Final Fantasy tradition. We'll be exploring this with a dark knight named Lun, because I felt like being cute. The first step is attributes. We have 25 points to spend between 4 attributes on a 1 to 1 ratio, with a range of 1 to 10. In our case, we'll start with Power 8, Resolve 6, Dexterity 4, and Mind 7. These provide the basis for two derived attributes, Force and Finesse. Effectively, your physical and mental ability for offense and defense. These are calculated by adding either Power and Resolve, or Dexterity and Mind, respectively, dividing by 4 and rounding down. Thus, Lund's Force is 3 and his Finesse is 2. Second step is combat statistics. This is where the job's effects come into play first and foremost. The stats generated here are hit points, magic points, avoidance, accuracy, armor, and magic armor. Hit points are self-explanatory, and are the sum of resolve and the job's HP bonus multiplied by level. Magic points are similarly calculated, merely using mind instead of resolve. Avoidance is the character's ability to dodge, based on one-fourth of your dexterity score and the job's bonus. Accuracy is your ability to hit, rooted in half your level and the job's bonus. Lastly, armor and magic armor are based on your equipment, possibly with a modifier based on your job. Now taking all this into account, we have an HP of 26, MP of 9, a void of 1, and accuracy of 2, with armor and magic armor not getting a default bonus. Step 3 is job abilities, the core and non-core features of the job. Automatically gain the innate ability of the job, as well as two additional abilities from either the job-specific abilities or the shared abilities. As a Dark Knight, we gain the Dark Side ability as an innate. As for the remaining spell slots, we'll go with Forceful Intentions and Last Resort. Dark Side allows for our next attack or spell to increase damage by three steps, at the cost of one-fourth of our maximum HP. S for maximum skill caps, and Last Resort increases damage by one step when at 50% health. Step 4 is Skills and Magic. Every job has a set of skill points to start with, which can be spent to a point. The maximum amount of points that can be allocated is equal to 1 plus Finesse, or in our case, Force. We have 20 points to spend, with a cap of 4. Our spread for this is going to be Athletics 4, Awareness 4, Scavenge 3, Escape 3, Nature 3, and Systems 3. As for magic, as a Dark Knight we gain one novice level black spell. In our case we'll go with Blizzard as our starting spell. Step 5 is Equipment. We have 500 gale to spend on weapons, armor, and other parts of our inventory. We'll go with a tier 1 greatsword and heavy armor, 5 potions, and 5 ethers, leaving us with 50 gale. Character creation is fairly simple, though one where I could see a degree of choice paralysis. This is because there's a wide variety of choices, but few slots for them. Also, much as I like the freedom that's present with the equipment system, I think a few example consumables slash foods from the game might help a great deal. But the biggest nitpick I have is the lack of racial effects. I know that in an earlier build it had races modify the maximums for abilities, but I don't think it'd hurt to have a few racial abilities to make them distinct. Not bad, but I'd hesitate to say it follows through on the laid-back goals with some parts. Final Fantasy D6 uses a roll-high 2d6 system, i.e. 2d6 plus modifiers versus a difficulty number. A roll of box cars, i.e. two sixes, is a critical hit, and a roll of snake eyes, i.e. two ones, is a complication. Combat is more theater of the mind rather than a map-based affair emulating the source material with a fast-paced approach. It should be noted that critical hits in combat deal double damage. Regardless, an individual may only take up to three actions, but only one standard action. 
Some actions count as slow actions, activating in one round and taking effect on the second round. Destiny can act as the game's extra effort system of a sort, earned from certain job abilities or narrative benefit. These can be used to add an additional d6 to a roll at the cost of one point, or at the cost of three points, things like changing jobs, using certain abilities, as well as certain limit breaks, or at a varying cost summoning espers if one is a summoner. Limit breaks are custom point-based sets of effects, but with 10, 20, and 30 points potentially. They can be activated on a critical hit, or with a basic action when your HP is 25% of your maximum. In addition, the GM may award slots for limit abilities, but these do not activate the way a limit break does. Most of the mechanics are pretty straightforward and easy to pick up. The only thing I didn't particularly care for are the percentile effects. Well, it could be used with the 2d6 roll, since most are some multiple of 25%. It's doable, but it still bugs me. Also, the way limit abilities and limit breaks are unlocked with the GM discretion approach is something I could see dipping into Monty Hall territory for the unprepared. Final Fantasy D6 is a fairly customizable affair, but it seems to have the philosophy of wide choices with narrow slots. Normally, I wouldn't have an issue with that, but the fact that casting classes are going to have two pools of options could create a caster-non-caster -caster divide. That said, it's still a very nice spread of abilities, and the crystal motif definitely helps establish build suggestions. With that in mind, I'd give Final Fantasy D6 a stamp of recommended. It's a good, solid game, but I'm not entirely sure if it's within the laid-back nature the game's aiming for. But that's only the first step on this journey. Tomorrow, we'll have a look at a much more slimmed-down affair.